From the battle over eminent domain and private property rights to what is actually in the pipelines and the impact it could have on the land in the Midwest. Tonight, I wrap up my series on carbon capture pipelines. Here's the last installment of Along the Route. It's not flammable, it's not combustible, it's just under pressure. As Summit Carbon Solutions and Navigator CO2 Ventures get closer to obtaining the permits and easements required for their carbon capture pipelines, those still in the fight to stop them are pushing forward. I'm probably too cynical here, but I look at something like that and I think, wait a minute, that's a private for-profit company who's making promises that apparently are non-binding and there are no regulations to force them to either to do it at first or what about three years from now, five years from now, when it's out of the public mind, uh, if the pipelines are built, are they going to continue to supply or th the necessary equipment? Are they going to continue to give the necessary I don't think they will. And who's going to hold them accountable to do that? Exactly. There's nothing in place to hold them accountable. For this group of landowners and private citizens, it's more than just the fight for their own property. It's making sure their friends and neighbors see the bigger picture. Well, the other thing is they had economic growth there behind them. But if you come around the largest city of Sioux City in our county, and this is going to be at, on the farm located on the corner of Buchanan Avenue and Highway 20, well, that doesn't leave much room for Sioux City to grow east. And Sioux City can't grow north and it can't grow west and south is really difficult. So east is really the only viable option. Where are we going to get economic growth if our largest city in our county has done it? And I wonder how many people out at Whispering Creek know that that pipeline is going to be right out their back door. So I want, to, I want to expand on that. Do you think the general public understands that they're not directly impacted by these pipelines, by these companies? Do you think they understand yeah. what's no. happening? No. They have no. no clue. I'm always astounded so. by the people or number of people that do not know anything they about these They are unaware and thank you for putting this in the media. And, and they're shocked it. when you tell them about it. Yep. Yeah. They don't know if you say, well, how about that pipeline? They, what, they go, what? You know? Yeah. So they don't, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about Northeast Nebraska. And this, and both, we don't know anything about it. Because I've asked several people mm -hmm. like, that live in the city of South Sioux or whatever, Dakota City. No, we don't know anything about it. Well, well it's going to come through this huge pipeline for, you know, like from Navigator and Summit. And they go, you know, you know so it's kind of a, a hidden <laughs> agenda. Well, they're only required to notify a certain corridor of yeah. landowners. They don't have to notify the entire community. They don't have to hold meetings for the entire city. They're only required to notify X number of people. And they don't even have to notify the neighbors of the landowners, which I think is wrong because it also affects your neighbors. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can go within, you know, a few hundred feet 300 of your feet. neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, it could be out in my field, but next to someone else's house. But just on your property. Right, so. exactly. That property not just owned by private citizens. Because it goes through not only uh, private landowners, uh, places, but there's going to be waterways and other structures that are also of interest to the public that uh, these uh, pipelines and other structures go through as well. As many landowners and experts say, there are other ways to capture carbon dioxide. And I bet you everybody on this panel if it was presented to us that we would get paid to do some of those projects and it would come to the landowners that we'd all be in favor of that. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly would be if I was getting paid. I'm already paid. doing it. Yeah, and you're yes, doing yes. it with Sheriff P. Yes, Sounds like Steve is too on some of his. But uh, so, I mean, that would be the benefit of the landowner that it should go to, not a out-of-state private corporation. And some farmers are now doing cover crops, so that's exactly. a question of yeah, carbon. Another, and so there's yeah. always, a, you know, there's an incentive to do that for some of the farmers at all, and more, more and more farmers are continuing to do that, you know, to try and go through fields that that that, that, that corn and beans are actually sequestering carbon as it is, and you know, kind of ruin that. That that seems backwards. But for Summit and Navigator and the dozens of ethanol plants they've each partnered with on this journey, they say carbon sequestration is the next step in ethanol innovation. And the time for that step forward is now. There, and there's always going to be a fear of the unknown. Um, and, and, you know, we don't develop 
broad inter interstate pipeline infrastructure every day. Um, this is something that, that you know, is, happens maybe every decade or, or they're often. We're an agricultural company putting an infrastructure project in. We are ag-based and, um, and it, it's just where my heart lies. Uh, the future of agriculture is where, what drives me. And uh, so I don't want people to miss what this means uh, for the future of the agricultural farm gate. If you would like to rewatch one or any of the 12 parts of this series, you can find them online now at our website, SiouxLandNews.com.